in this video we are still on the, the symmetric groups now we are going to see some symmetries of a square so the symmetries of a square are going to be associated to the group d4 okay okay first um, I'm going to label the corners of this <coughs> square um, the four corners one one two three four and now I'm going to describe rho as a rotation so this will be one two three four so a rotation means here we are going to to rotate uh, counterclockwise so this is going to be um, one right one will move to one one will move to position two so one will move to position two two will move to position three right three to position four and four to position one okay so this will be a rotation okay and here we will have a reflection um, across a horizontal uh, axis okay so this was one one will be so one will be two and two will be one and three will be four and four will be three right so this reflection will be one two three four um, so one move to position two right two move to position one three move to position four and four to position three right so we will have a reflection sorry a rotation and a reflection so here we show the the group table for the four uh, for the square so this E will be the identity this row is the rotation 90 um, so now the first rotation second rotation and third rotation this one is the um, the reflection so this is a rotation and a reflection two rotations and a reflection three rotations and a reflection okay and this is the Cayley table for D4 I know I used some different um, notation on previous videos like um, for the rotation here I used rotation of 90 degrees right uh, for the reflection here I used something like um, I think it was H right and um, well it's the same it's only a, a difference of notation okay so we move into the cycle notation I read that this uh, cycle notation was um, introduced by uh, what's the first name of Cauchy? Augustin I think uh, Augustin Cauchy but I'm, I'm not sure about this okay um, this cycle notation 
has enormous advantages in that certain important properties of the permutation can be determined when the cyclic notation is used. Okay, so I'm going to pick one example. That will be one, two, three, four. Okay, let's put a bigger one. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? And this will be two, one, four, six, five, and the last one goes to three, right? Okay. Um, um, a bit better, right? Okay. So this is the permutation I call the permutation alpha. Okay. So if you look well, um, one goes to one goes to two, and two goes to one. Okay. And uh, three goes to four. 4, 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 6, but 6 goes to 3, right? Okay. And what about 5? What about 5? Well, 5 goes to 5. Okay. Uh, well, we are not going to, to keep drawing these sort of diagrams, right? So we can rewrite alpha in cyclic notation as one one goes to two, so this means one goes to two, two goes to one. Um, three, four, six. There are several ways of doing this cyclic notation. For instance, I don't use these commas, okay, but I'm I'm using it now. So, 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 6, 6 goes to 3, 3 goes, this means th 3 goes to 4, 4 goes to 6, 6 goes to 3, 3 goes to 4, okay, this is another cycle, and the last cycle is 5 goes to 5, okay. I could easily write this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 5. Okay. Um, let us do another example. Let us do a... a permutation beta of... I mean, six here, right? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, one goes to five, five goes to two, two goes to three, three goes to one, back to one, four goes to six, six goes to four. Okay, cyclic notation for this. How can I rewrite better? I can rewrite 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1, 1 goes to 5. So 2, 3, 1, 5. 6 goes to 4, 4 goes to 6, right? So that will be 6, 4. But um, You can also represent this like 4 goes to 6, right? So you can say 4 goes to 6, and now, for instance, 3 goes to 1, 3 goes to 1, 1 goes to 5, and 5 goes to 2. Okay, so this is uh, both of these um, are this uh, better. 
So every time you have a an expression in this form a1, a2, an, um, this is written in cyclic notation, and we say that this uh, cycle is a cycle of length m. Okay. Oh, um, this this is a m. Okay. A one, a two, a m. I call this m. I call this n, but it should be m, okay? Or if this is a n, I'll write here n, okay? So cycle of length m, okay? Or also you can call it m cycle. A multiplication of cycles can be introduced by thinking of a cycle as a permutation that fixes any symbol not appearing in the cycle. For instance, imagine you have this cycle written this way, 4, 6, um, so 1, 2, 3, so what they say is 4 goes to 6, right, and 6 goes to 4. Okay, what about uh, the other members. Well, 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2, 3 goes to 3, and 5 goes to 5. Okay? So, whatever this is called, this is the same. This is, this is the cyclic representation. Okay? And this, this is the same permutation. Okay. Um, um, so let us consider this example. Uh, this example is living in uh, the group of symmetry 8, right? Okay. So you have this permutation, alpha, in cyclic form. 1, 3, 2, 7, 4, 5, 6, 8. And beta, 1, 5, 7, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8, here. Okay. I'm dropping commas here, right? Because when the domain consists of single digit integers, meaning if you don't have tens and elevens, okay, it is common practice to omit the commas between the digits, okay, so I'll, I'll be writing that way. So now the question is, what is the cycle form of AB? Well, you can say just put everything on one uh, just put everything like um, can we write this this way of course we can four five six eight right and then one five seven two three four six and eight of course we can do this. Of course we can, but it is more, it is better to express a permutation in disjoint cycle form. Okay? That is, various cycles that have no member in common. You see, here we have so many members in common. So, how are we going to do this? So here, 1 is sended to 3. And the next cycle, we have 2, 7. So nothing happens on 3. Next cycle, we have 4, 5, 6, 8. So nothing happens on 3 again. So we leave it alone. Now we have 1, 5, 7, 2. Nothing happens to 3 again. But we have 3 here. So, 1 goes to 3, and 3 goes to 4, okay? So we start writing 1 goes to 4.
now um, we already have one that goes to four because we stopped here uh, so we have four here now where is four going to okay we start again here no four here okay this it's no good for us no four here no good for us no good is not an expression it's not the way it's it's not exactly what is happening but it's okay for the moment so we have four here okay so four is taken to five and what about five five is taken to seven okay and stopped seven is not taken anywhere anymore okay so one goes to four and four goes to seven three goes to four but four goes to seven Okay, and um, okay, I think this this example is enough. Three, five, six, eight. Okay, okay, let us take another example. So this would be better written in the usual way. So one goes to two, two goes to one, etc. How could we write this in cyclic form? Well, one goes to two, two goes to one. Very easy. So this one stops here. Three goes to three. That's the next, next element. Okay. And now we get four goes to eight, eight goes to seven, seven goes to five, five goes to six. So four eight seven five six 